This fellow, Arctic Tern, apparently is the longest migratory bird. This detail is not there for you right now, but is there in your 12th standard textbook. So you remember this, okay? Can you spot the stick insect in this picture? students in the last classes we have covered adaptations of animals to feeding habits and before that we have covered adaptations in animals to habitats in this lecture we are going to cover migration and hibernation and adaptations of animals for protection so shall we begin do you know what is migration and what is hibernation what is meant by migration what is meant by hibernation First of all, both these activities are carried out by animals which live in extremely cold places, okay, like the polar regions. Hmm? In such places in winters, you know, it is so cold, it's so extremely cold in winters, there is no food available, everything is covered with snow. No food is available, no animals will venture out. If you do, you will freeze to death. Okay, it is so cold and snow, so snowy over there. Okay, so in this situation, the animal during winter has two options. Okay, yato it can move from that place to another place which is more warmer and return back to its original place when the winter is over here in its original habitat. That's the first thing it can do. The second thing it can do is stay over there only. But stay in some, uh, you know, deep burrows or deep caves and sleep over there till the entire winter is over. Okay, it will be there till the entire winter is over and it will come out only when the winter is over and when it is nice and leafy and green outside. Understood? When food is available outside, only then it will come out. So, these are the two options that the animal can do. When the animal moves away from one place to another place temporarily to get back to its place when the winter is over, this is known as migration. And when the animal stays right there, okay, in some hiding and sleeps over the entire winter and emerges out only when winter is over, that is known as hibernation, right? So we are going to look at both of these in detail, right? First point we will write is this is carried out by carried out by who by animals in which places animals in extremely cold places extremely cold places why because there is because there is food shortage food shortage also it is extremely cold cool now we are going to look at migration and hibernation in somewhat more detail let us look at migration first What do animals do in case of migration? Animals move away to warmer places where food is available and come back, they return, they make sure they don't just stay over there in a warmer place all the year round, okay? They make sure that they return to the habitat, come back to original habitat when winter gets over. Fine. Who does this? Do you know any migratory animals? Whales do this. Butterflies. There is this example of a bird called Arctic Tern. Siberian cranes. I will tell you some stories about Arctic tern and Siberian cranes. So this fellow Arctic tern 
apparently is the longest migratory bird okay what it does is suppose this is the earth okay it stays right there in the north pole and this is the south pole of the earth okay so it stays in the north pole where it is winter over here what season will be there in the south pole it will be it will be summer in the south pole okay so when there is winter in the north pole what it does you know it flies all the way to the south pole and it stays there so it is nice and warm over there at the south pole okay and when winter comes in the south pole okay what it does it goes back again to the north pole it goes back home when it is when winter arrives over here it starts to become summer over here okay so such a long distance this arctic tern covers it is the longest migratory bird okay this fellow arctic term next siberian cranes i would like to talk about siberian cranes do you know that in india in rajasthan there is one national park called as the keolado national park okay this detail is not there for you right now but is there in your 12th standard textbook so you remember this okay there is one park called as keolado national park and apparently every year the keolado national park in bharatpur rajasthan witnesses thousands and thousands and flocks of siberian cranes which arrive from siberia okay they arrive over here when it is winter going on over there they arrive over here they have a nice vacation in the park and when the winter subsides in their habitat they return back to siberia cool over here also please write about arctic tern this is the longest longest distance migratory bird similarly even elephants are known to migrate i hope you know that theek hai next we move on to hibernation so we are talking about hibernation right now the second option that the animal has when there is extreme cold outside what does the animal do in this case it will go into a deep sleep okay throughout the winter it will go into deep caves or deep burrows and it will go into a deep slumber its heart beats are going to become very slow its metabolic rate is going to come really down it will expend as little energy as possible to conserve its energy because its energy should last all throughout the winter right it might last for like 3 or 4 months isn't it so for 3 or 4 months it will go into complete sleep okay now before the winter arrives during the summer season it will make sure that it eats a lot it makes sure that it stores a lot of fat okay and then the winter starts approaching it will go into the caves and will slow and it will get into a sleep and it will not wake up until the winter is over the animal becomes inactive or goes into deep sleep for the entire winter before winter it stores fat and it utilizes this fat during hibernation for what for energy examples of animals which uh, do hibernation bears then there is one called as arctic ground squirrel crocodiles okay examples many lizards and snakes animals usually hibernate 
where do they hibernate in caves or underground burrows there are some animals that do not sleep during winter but they sleep during extreme summers for some animals the winter is not the issue but it's the extreme summer that is the issue especially the ones that are like more dependent on water and such conditions like fishes then some amphibians and very delicate organisms like earthworms have you see ever seen the earthworms uh, during summers do have you ever seen them no mostly they come out during the rainy season the frog starts to croak during the rainy seasons where are they for the rest of the time yeah they are also hibernating they are also sleeping during this uh during the extreme summers but their sleep is different from the hibernating wale animals ki sleep in that the hibernating animals sleep during winters and they sleep during summers summer sleep winter sleep that is the difference okay summer sleep is called as estivation not hibernation estivation so shall we write that down that's called estivation estivation matlab summer sleep example earthworms many fishes bees tortoises long fish etc even the snail i've never seen a snail move out like that during the summers have you yeah it comes out only during the rains so where was she during the summers it was sleeping hmm it was estivating during summers clear so with that we have completed migration and hibernation we call it as summer sleep fine Our next section is very interesting the adaptations in animals for protection from predators some animals also show adaptations for protecting themselves from the predators okay and they are of several different types for example you must be knowing about the chameleon right yeah tell me about the chameleon how does it have that adaptation for protection it will show the property of camouflage right wherever it goes it blends into its surroundings it changes its colors to blend into its surroundings so so that the predator is not able to spot it very easily okay do you know any other examples which the animals use for protection do you know about the puffer fish the puffer fish it's actually a small cute little fish but when the enemy comes it will just puff itself in a huge size it will become nice and tun tun so that the enemy will get scared of it and will stay away from it i will say it's better to stay away from this guy it's a big guy but in reality it's a small fish okay so that's an adapt so that's yet another adaptation for one of my most favorite example of uh, adaptations of animals for uh, protection is the leaf insect Have you seen have you ever seen a leaf insect it looks so similar to a leaf okay so similar it will appear as if it's just a innocent leaf that is lying there but in reality it is a it is actually an insect okay so what it will do it will just stay still even if the predator is just nearby what it has to do all it has to do is just stay still and it should not move if it moves it's dead understood yes same goes for the stick insect in the in the appearance size shape it will look just like a dry twig of a plant okay and it stays it remains like that and will just stay still you will not be able to okay i will show you one picture in this picture tell me where the stick insect is can you spot the stick insect in this picture no right there is one if you closely observe 
Okay, students, all the notes of this lecture have been given in the description below. All my lectures come with free notes. I also have lectures in my channel which has all the compilation of questions that appear from the topics that are covered before that video. Please go through those videos as well for questions compilation. And let us look at these different adaptations that the animals have in them for protecting themselves from predators. That's right, they are adaptations. Adaptations are in animals to protect themselves. From who? From predators and also from competitors. Okay, and we are going to discuss the different examples under this. First of all, the animals have sharp senses of sight, smell and hearing. The moment they see any danger, the moment they, they smell any danger, the, the moment they hear any danger, what will they do? They will either run away or they will fly away or they will swim away. Okay, most of these animals have sharp senses of senses of sight, then smell and also hearing. And upon seeing danger or smelling danger or hearing danger, they will either run away what will they do when they sense danger? They are the runaway. Give example. For example, deer. Around deer, if you make the slightest of sound, they will just run away from danger. Okay? Deer, zebra, they will run away quickly. They fly away. They hear danger, they quickly fly away. Example, many insects, insects even birds. Swim away. Example fishes. Second, huge size. Having a huge size helps. Having a huge size is actually an adaptation of an animal for protecting itself from the enemies. Can you give me examples? For example, we have the elephant, then you have the hippo, giraffe. Right, whale, the animals will look at them and get scared away. They will get scared, isn't it? They will think twice. The enemy will think twice before attacking uh, an elephant, isn't it? Or a hippo or a rhino. They look big and strong, so that means they will have that much of strength, won't they? Hmm? So having a huge size helps. Scares away animals. Examples. You must know the examples of each of these. Who has which feature? Example elephant, then you have the whale, hippo, hippopotamus, even a bear. Third example mimicry. Mimicry in simple words means copying others. Let us start with an example, okay? So that is this caterpillar, okay? Hawk moth caterpillar, okay? It's actually quite delicious and tasty for a predator to eat, to feed on it. A predator would love to feed on it. However, you know, it looks, it has the appearance of a snake. It, its head looks like a snake. So tell me now, if a predator sees it, will it be attracted towards it? Or will it try to run away from it? It will try to run away from it. For example, if there is a bird, it will get scared away from this when it sees the snake. But in reality, it is not a snake. It is actually a caterpillar. Okay? Fantastic example of mimicry. It is copying the appearance of a snake to protect itself from its enemy. Okay? Many insects and flies which are actually harmless. Okay? They are very tasty also. But what it will but what they will do? They will have the appearance of bees and wasps which are very stingy in nature, only in appearance. Okay? So that the predators will stay away from them. 
they will get scared of them they will think they are bees and wasps and they might sting them so they will stay away from them so these are these adaptations are known as mimicry copying someone else to protect themselves and to look dangerous okay that's called mimicry copying or imitating other animals example many harmless flies mimic dangerous and then you, you must remember the example hawk moth caterpillar mimics a snake if you say it even you will get scared you might think it's a chopped off head of a snake which is still coming alive to hiss at you hiss. right agree yes or no yeah you'll get scared i know you next we are writing about camouflage camouflage means blending with surroundings easy example the chameleon changes its color according to its surroundings if it is in the leaves it will become green color if it is in the twigs and all which are which are brownish in color it will change to brown color okay now the example the stick insect the stick insect looks like a looks like a stick what will you call that uh, insect that looks like a leaf the leaf insect very good how about a grasshopper and a parrot a grasshopper and parrot also show camouflage how because a grasshopper is in green color and so is a parrot that is in green color and with that green color they have the advantage that they won't be seen if they are hiding in the leaves isn't that yes have green color for camouflage can you give me more examples for example the stripes that are present on a zebra they are also a form of camouflage how about the tiger the tiger also is known for having stripes so all the advantages you want god to give only the prey you don't want any advantages for the predator the predator should also be unseen no into the when it is hiding okay so the stripes are also given to the tiger so that it blends in its surroundings so does the so does the zebra okay zebra also has camouflage to blend in its surroundings even the fur of the polar bear the fur of the polar bear which is white in color it gives it an excellent advantage of camouflage let us write down stripes of zebra tiger white of fur of polar bear camouflage in snow it will hide it in the snow so that was mimicry and camouflage adaptations for protection moving on moving in herds or groups most of these uh, herbivorous animals you must have seen like deer zebras you hardly see them moving alone all by itself do you no they are mostly seen in herds even elephants buffaloes okay they are they like to be in herds so even fish okay what do you call groups of fishes by the way quick trivia quick gk question for you what do you call a group of fish a group of fish is called a shoal shoal or a school of fish okay all right so most of these animals like to stay in groups or herds so why what is the need to stay in a herd a herd provides protection okay when there is a herd 
there is a herd strength the uh, everyone looks out for each other okay when there is an approaching danger they will signal each other they might also face the enemy together okay when there is an approaching danger then the herd animals will also face the face the enemy together okay it also provides protection to the young ones that are there which are usually prone to predation isn't it if you have ever noticed a herd of an elephant they will keep their baby elephants in the, in the center of the herd and all the other elephants will surround them and they will walk in her walk in groups like that so they are protected from all four sides right even you as a, even for you you have seen that you have an instinct to stay between your mama and papa isn't it do you like to stay on the side when mama and papa are like that no right you like to stay in between that is a natural instinct in you to stay between to be protected on both sides if the enemy come from this side i'll be protected enemy come from this side i'll be protected right so that is a natural instinct to stay in the center cool example buffalo fish elephant deer zebra birds elephants form a circle animals form a circle around their babies to protect them like some animals have horns those have horns for protection give examples example the rhinoceros any other how about the buffaloes these are for protection okay and for fighting some animals have the presence of a shell give examples the snail tortoise how do you pronounce this tortoise tortoise so how does the shell help these animals they protect if you have seen the actual animal the snail and tortoise is actually they are very soft bodied animals okay but the shell that they have will protect and cover them okay even the muscles you know the muscles tisaria the clams which open which have two halves like that right the actual animal inside is a very soft bodied animal but the shell that they have on the outside will protect them cover them right for that matter even the snail during approaching dangers what do the snail and the tortoise do they will retract into their shell and that's how they protect themselves the shells are quite hard they will they are not easily broken by the enemy protect the soft bodies of animal animal retracts into its shell during danger some animals have spines all over their body spines are like big long thorns have you ever seen a porcupine a porcupine will have spines all over its body all over its body in marathi we call it as do you know what they are called in marathi sar sar so what do they do during approaching danger first of all they will just make their uh, spines very upright so it will look very big sized okay big size it will look the animal will get scared and despite that if an animal approaches it you know what it does it actually shoots its spines at you okay they will actually hit you and prick you and injure you okay these are called spines they are for protection example porcupine has spines all over body which it uses to attack enemy then there is one ink sac what is an ink sac some animals some marine animals which are in water okay example the cuttlefish or also the octopus you know what they do you know what they have they have some things called as ink sacs or ink glands okay they are filled with a fluid okay which is blackish or purplish in color okay and when the enemy 
comes before them you know what they are going to do they are going to eject the ink from the ink sac the water in front of the enemy becomes black in color okay it's not able to see it becomes temporarily blinded and in that meantime the fish is going to move away okay the octopus or the cuttlefish is going to run away to safety right ink sac example cuttlefish octopus ink from ink sac ejected during danger temporarily blinds enemy and then the cuttlefish escapes the octopus you know some giant octopuses and all they might use it for attack also okay next is pretending to be dead pretending to be dead many of you might have tried this with your parents even i have tried it in my childhood just pretend to be dead okay no movement no breathing so that people around you get scared and they stop scolding you or attacking you or anything many snakes do this they just pretend to be dead no movement so even if an enemy comes it will see that it is dead it will just play around with it, it will not move it will just stay still as possible and uh, when the thing is dead there is no fun right so and the animals usually don't eat dead animals so they will just leave it and go and the snake will then escape go cool. pretending to be dead example snakes finally we have the last one enlarging in size we discussed this example the puffer fish tell me about the puffer fish yeah what do you remember it's actually a small sized fish but it can blow itself twice its size when it sees an approaching danger and it will just scare away the enemies So these are all the adaptations in animals for protection from predators okay there are several others but these are the ones that you need to remember that's it from today's lecture students see you in the next lesson bye